we think we've come up with a middle ground. I like it. Are you ready? I am. All right. Three, two, one. Lombardi! Hi, David. Good morning. How are you? That's awesome. It's the best intro ever. How you doing? Well, there nice, it is. David. Yeah. There it is. And, uh, and, and thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining <laughs> us. And hey, three-year-old, uh, thank you for listening. And, and, and we, we hope that that that, uh, that did it for you. Um, all guests on 95.7 The Game up here on the River Islands guest line. Isn't it time for you to discover the islands? River Islands in Lathrop. And that's where David Lombardi of The Athletic joins us. All right, David, uh, what is your initial reaction to the Brandon Ayuk trade request? Well, uh, I just look at the timing and the 49ers veterans report now in less than a week, but yesterday was the week out mark and I view it as a last ditch attempt from Brandon Ayuk and his camp to try to rock the boat because the situation just does not line up in their favor. The 49ers have him under contractual control for this 2024 season already at a really favorable rate. They hold the threat of using the franchise tag for 2025. So Brandon Ayuk is staring at potentially two years of team control at a team favorable price, which that's just the way the NFL is set up. Nobody's saying it's fair for the players, but that's the way that it is. It's very team oriented. And because of that, he's, if he wants a new deal now, if he wants more money right now, he's going to have to come closer to the 49ers terms because their top option is to just stand pat and recognize that they hold the leverage here. Uh, the subsequent report yesterday after Mike Garofalo talked about the trade request was Adam Schefter saying that the 49ers have no plans to trade Brandon Ayuk. So we saw it with Debo Samuel two seasons ago. They obviously will listen to any and all offers because that, that, you know, it's a certain price. He'll move anybody, but it's just very unlikely that the 49ers would, uh, you know, hear an offer that would be able to make their team better this season. Brandon Ayuk is a really good player. They like him on their team and they really like him at the cost that they have him out right now and holding the leverage that they do. The best option for them is to just stand pat. And the best option for him is probably to sign whatever he can to get a huge raise on what he will make. But it seems like his number's higher than it was earlier in the offseason because the market moved. How far apart do you think these two sides still are, David? Well, he has two options. He can bet on himself and he could play on the fifth year option. But the problem there is that there's no guarantee that he's going to hit unrestricted free agency because the 49ers hold the franchise tag. So that, that option, technically he has that option, but it, it's not as appealing just because of the scepter of that, of that franchise tag. So uh, when we talk about how far apart they might be, I, I think it, it's significant at this point. And I think that, you know, the, the word significant there, let's view it in the context of the 49ers. They have to be really, really careful. They're incentivized to be extremely judicious with how they spend because they've paid more of these A-list guys than any other team in the NFL ever since Shanahan and Lynch showed up. That you know, it's a good problem to have. But every single season, they've had at least one massive contract to give out. And you're looking at next off season where Brock Purdy is going to be in line for a new deal. If you want to keep this team together, keep the core together, uh, you know, to the greatest extent possible moving forward. You have to be very, very judicious with the financial Tetris is what I call it to make sure the flow control of uh, the, the money works out. So they have a number in mind that they think is going to work so they can keep things together moving forward and they don't want to go much past it. Meanwhile, Brandon Ayuk has a number in mind when I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, I can infer based on where the receiver market has gone based on the fact that Justin Jefferson absolutely obliterated the previous high water mark. I'm sure that Brandon Ayuk wants something that, uh, you know, is not Justin Jefferson money, but it's something that that's higher than, than it initially was. Just it's, it's human nature to see your peers making that much money. And uh, you, obviously you have a valuable resume to, to stack up with theirs. You're going to want your money to be closer to that end of the spectrum. So there's that gap right now. Nobody on the outside really is sure how big it is. Uh, but but the 49ers are not really incentivized to move off their number because they're not just thinking about Brandon Ayuk. They're thinking about 
an entire roster, including Brock Purdy, and keeping it together past this season. David Lombardi, the athletic with us here on Willard and Dibbs, 95.7 The Game. David, is it your understanding that Brandon and his agent may have moved the goalposts at one point because of that evolving wide receiver market? In other words, asked for one thing and then it changed when these other contracts started coming in? I'm not sure exactly what the, you know, I haven't been sitting in on these negotiations, so I can't, you know, speak with authority on that. But I think that just naturally, that's how these things work, right? Of you, you, you talk and you just try to sit down at the table and discuss where, you know, the fair compensation is going to be. And then there are market forces and, and there are dynamics that set precedent outside of the room uh, that can impact where that discussion goes. So I'm sure that it's, evolved over time i would you know just when we talk about the the details and if and when the deal does get signed uh, i would really urge people to look at the fully guaranteed money because i think that's you know much bigger deal to, to players ultimately than than just the average per year and you know the only number that we have out there right now i think mike silver reported it is that the 49ers offered brandon iu 26 million dollars per year but that's that's a really broad uh, thing, right? The, we don't know if it's $26 million per year of, you know, a lot of funny money, uh, which means non-guaranteed money tacked on to future years that inflated that APY, uh, or, or if it was a, a solid $26 million per year. So it, that when we look at contracts and when we judge contracts against other ones, it's the guaranteed money that, that ends up being really important and ends up being the determinant for how strong that contract is. And oftentimes in the media and on social media, we just see the APY and, you know, people lose their minds over that kind of stuff, but, but it really has uh, no, no bearing on uh, the actual standing of the contract. So what do you think, David, the timeline is as far as when he might report or if he doesn't report by when, Will they start tacking on fines? And is it an automatic that he will be fined, or do they have the ability to waive fines like they did with Nick Bosa last year? Well, it is an automatic that he will be fined forty thousand dollars per day, but but they can retroactively waive it. Now, the only group of players that you could waive it for, according to this new CBA, uh, are players playing on the fifth year option. So. Uh, yes, they they can waive the fines. I we haven't heard from the forty hires whether or not that they would plan to do so with the Brandon IU, but 40,000 per day is the number for uh, missed days of training camp. And then if this extended into the regular season, you basically start forfeiting game checks and he's set to make 14.1 million on the current deal right now. So you're paid by week in the NFL. You divide the 14.1 million by 17, 17 games. That's 829,000 per game. A team also, according to the CBA, reserves the right to fine a player that up to that amount for a missed preseason game. So, I mean, if the 49ers really start playing hardball, they could theoretically begin fining Brandon Ayuk up to $829,000. Uh, within the next month here, if he's still not around for the preseason. I'm not saying it's going to get to that. I'm just saying that's when we talk about teams having leverage in these situations, that adds to the leverage that teams have because they have these, these tremendous fining capabilities and they don't have to waive those fines. They obviously have the ability to, but um, we will see just exactly where the 49ers stand. David, how do you think this all resonates with his teammates? I think that players understand that uh, you you have the very limited opportunity to get a bite out of the apple in the NFL. It, you know, I, I hate to use the cliche, but it's a business and uh, it's a really, really tough business. As I've just been illustrating, the the business side of things is skewed in in the team's favor in the NFL. So I think that teammates, they, these guys are players, and they understand that you have to get yours when the time comes. So you have to exhaust every single negotiating opportunity that you have, negotiating tool that you have. And I think that's what Brandon Ayuk is doing right now. He hasn't missed any training camp yet. It's a week out and he puts in the trade request because he sees that, you know, the cards are stacked against him. He sees that, that it's going to be really hard to get the 49ers to move. Well, maybe you get a little extra concession out of the 49ers if they're desperate enough to avoid a holdout because they're in this win now year and 
They want to avoid, you know, the drama that that might have hurt them a little bit with Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel. Maybe the 49ers will, uh, you know, concede a little bit and, and sweeten the deal a little bit for Brandon Ayuk to get him into camp. It's one of those things, you know, I, I likened it yesterday to uh, you're losing a football game and you're a little frustrated and, you, you know, you're driving down the field. You're not going to win anyway, but, but there's, you know, maybe may, may, may a desperate small chance that you'll win. Your receiver makes a great catch near the sideline, but he only gets one foot in bounds. But it looks like maybe that second foot was in bounds, but probably not. And, and the coach is frustrated, and, and he throws the challenge flag. We call it a what-the-heck challenge flag. You know, I kind of feel this was a what-the-heck trade request. <laughs> Let's see what happens. You know, you, oh, maybe, maybe the 49ers budge. Hey, maybe they do. Maybe they just decided we'll trade him to a team that that's willing to pay him all this money. That's almost certainly not going to happen. But uh, maybe Brandon Ayuk is able to. It, it, I don't think that. I think that his representation and Brandon Ayuk they feel that yeah there might be some collateral damage here with the, the fans being upset that he demanded a trade. But nobody remembers the Debo Samuel situation. I don't think anybody holds that against him anymore. So I don't think his teammates hold it against him either. I think that the, the business aspect of this is is what resonates with players and, and it should because they've got to stand up for for their money and and then once the season starts uh guys need to be on the field and and if he's not on the field by the time this, the season starts i think that's one brandon Ayuk's teammates uh might uh might hold a more negative view of him do you think it was a misplay by Ayuk's agent to have the trade request come now because it felt like when debo did it in april of his year it was more impactful well, I mean, it, it, there's different negotiating tactics. I, I know that it, this one, you you can argue that they were doing in, in better faith. It's more of a good faith negotiation. They thought, okay, maybe we can, um, you, know, you know, without going out to the media and demanding a trade and getting all the fans worked up and, you know, having the organization's phones ring off the hook, maybe we could just uh, work on something behind the scenes. I think that that was the, the thinking here. But then, you know, Brandon Ayuk started taking this to social media anyway. Um, obviously, that didn't, that didn't help the situation. And um, so anyway, they, they just they did it now. Like I said, it was a what the heck trade request. It was that, that challenge flag that you throw late, at the game, late in the game, even though it, it's, it's probably not going to work. David, um, I think also yesterday, this was tucked underneath all of it, and, and it scared some people that Brandon Ayuk requests a trade, and then, oh, by the way, the 49ers put Ricky Pearsall on the non-football injury list. I know there hasn't been official word on what's going on, but is there any light that you can shed on that situation? So, well, supposedly the, the Pearsall situation or the injury that he's listed with is not a major one, so it doesn't sound like it's tied to the Brandon Ayuk situation. It would have to be a more significant injury for Ricky Pearsall. All I know is that NFI, uh, the non-football injury list, it's a bit of a misnomer. Uh, if you get hurt away from the team facility, even if you are participating in a football activity, you go on NFI. So he, he could have gotten hurt doing something that, that wasn't football. I don't know. But, it, I mean, we've seen all these videos of Ricky Pearsall working out in Arizona, running routes, and it, it probably came from that. We'll find out, I'm sure, soon enough. And since that injury, if that is what happened, didn't occur at the Fort Anders facility, when rookies reported on Tuesday and the, the Fort Anders had to document that injury, they had to put Pearsall on the non-football injury list because that's what – that's what uh, the, the classification has to be. So uh, the word is, though, that it's not a serious injury and, and it's probably not related to this whole Brandon Ayuk trade request. Okay. David, um, your best guess on how this all plays out is what? I think it, it, it's. Uh, I think Ayuk is going to play for the 49ers this year. I'm not sure if he's going to play on that 50-year option or if he, he'll bring his asking price down and, and sign. I think that uh, the franchise tag probably, the threat of it probably uh, gets Brandon Ayuk to sign for uh, a, a contract that, that that is in that Amon Ross St. Brown territory that we've been talking about um, over the course of this offseason. I don't know exactly when it gets done, but the 49ers obviously want it done sooner rather than later. They, they don't want another one of these to, to drag out indefinitely, but they're also thinking about their future and they can't just cave for the sake of caving because that can hurt them 
uh, in the future here when, when even more of these contracts come due and when they have to execute a new mega deal with Brock Purdy. And just to clarify, by the Amon Ra St. Brown neighborhood, you mean the actual guarantee, which is 34.66, as opposed to the 30 million average annual? Yeah, yeah. So I'm always talking about fully, fully guaranteed money. I, I, I figured that Ayuk would come in over, and, and I think that's what he wants. And I think that the 40, uh, over the Amon Ra St. Brown line, and I think the 49ers might ultimately benefit from executing something like that as well, because you have to remember that the, you can you could work and monkey with the numbers more if it's guaranteed money because signing bonus money and guaranteed option bonus money can be prorated, stretched out over five years against the cap. So if if they do give Brandon Ayuk a big signing bonus and if they do give him a bigger option bonus, they actually can reward him while also becoming more flat, flexible with their own salary cap situation. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was more than forty million dollars in fully guaranteed money for. Brandon Ayuk, when this is all said and done, because ultimately, uh, in a in a weird way, that that can that could benefit the 49ers. Cash rich teams actually can fare better in in the salary cap era because they can manipulate those numbers and create some room with the financial Tetris that I was talking about. So my projected deal for Brandon Ayuk, I wrote this way back in like February or March. I was north of that 40 million fully guaranteed. And, and I think that that's probably where Brandon Ayuk will, will end up if they can get this deal done this offseason. David, great stuff, man. We, we thank you so much for hopping on.